Texans are now receiving exorbitant energy bills, adding insult to injury after essentially being victimized by rolling blackouts during a brutal winter storm. Dozens of people have died as a result of this, including some children. I read a story today about a Family of three children and a grandmother who died because they used their fireplace to stay warm. And that started a fire while they were sleeping and they were unable to escape their home. It's just one unbelievably devastating story after the next. And now people are getting these exorbitant utility bills, including one person who received nearly $17,000 in their energy bill. Now, Governor Abbott from Texas convened that his office described, convened what his office described, I should say, as an emergency meeting Saturday with lawmakers to discuss the issue. The Public Utility Commission on Sunday met to sign two orders, including one that that would direct energy providers to temporarily stop disconnecting customers from power or water because they have not paid. The commission also signed an order to stop companies from sending invoices or bill estimates to customers until we work through issues of how we are going to financially manage the situation we are in. And that was a statement from commission chair Deanne Walker. Now, obviously, if the power grid weren't privatized and deregulated to the extent that it has been in the state of Texas. They wouldn't find themselves in the situation that they're in right now. And that's really the heart of the story. It's not this battle between fossil fuels and renewable energy. That's what the fossil fuel industry would have you believe. That's what the Republican Party would have you believe. But this is really a story of what goes awry once you tie power, electricity to the so-called free market, when you tie it to supply and demand and essentially deregulate this to the point where companies don't weatherize their equipment to be able to withstand incredibly cold temperatures. Although Governor Abbott blamed progressive energy policies for the devastating power outages that hit the state during freezing winter weather, experts have pointed to other factors including lax regulations that let the energy industry cut corners on winterizing. And that's from TYT Investigates reporting, which I want to provide more details for a little later in the show. But Jenk, why don't you jump in? Yeah, so I want to explain very simple economics to Republicans who apparently know nothing about economics or business. So it's called supply and demand. So when you put energy companies on variable pricing, depending on supply and demand, that guarantees that in, ter- in times of disaster, you will have price gouging. Why? Because the supply will be limited. In this case, the pipes froze. But in other instances, there are other issues that come because of extreme weather event- events that shuts down energy sources. In this case, almost all of it was oil and gas that was shut down. And that is the predominant energy source in Texas. So that cre- created low supply of energy. And it's at the same exact time that everybody needs that energy because it's so cold outside because of the same disaster. So you have high demand. Econ 101, if you have high demand and low supply, you will have high prices. And in this case, the prices absolutely skyrocketed. So one woman had a bill of $202,000. It's absurd, absurd. We're gonna get to the solution in a second. But I wanna give you another fact here. Normally they get about 12 cents per kilowatt hour. That's that's the charge for on average, 12 cents. During this catastrophe, it was $9 on average, let alone the the, the bills that are for $16,000, $3,000, $200,000, etc. But from A normal person paying 12 cents as a ratio gets you to a bill of about $330 or so, okay? If you're going from $330 to $3,000 or $17,000, well, of course no one can afford that. So what the Republicans did by setting up this unregulated so-called free market, but it's actually crony capitalism because only a certain number of companies can get these contracts and they need government permission. We're gonna get to how they get that in a second. But anyway, so under these circumstances, the Republicans wrote price gouging into the law. Now they turn around and go, well, no one could have predicted this. No, any econ 
not major. Anyone who's ever taken Econ 101 could have predicted it. If you're saying no one could, that you couldn't predict it, you're basically saying I'm a total and utter moron and should not be in charge of anything, let alone the entire state of Texas. And guys, I don't say that to you if you're a plumber or a dentist and you don't remember Econ 101 from a long time ago. I'm saying that if you're the governor of the state, and you claim you set up this amazing system and you don't know what supply and demand does. And then you're like, oh my God, like Abbott. Like Abbott fell out of a turnip truck the other day, apparently. He's like, oh my God, supply and demand, I never heard of it. I can't believe we have these bills. Nobody saw these bills coming. Well, you're basically saying I'm really, really dumb and you should fire me instantly. He knows. I mean, look, not that it even matters at this point, but I don't think that Abbott is dumb. I don't think that Republican lawmakers are dumb. I think they know exactly what happens when you deregulate these companies and when you privatize, you know, privatize the utilities, right? Energy and essentially allow them to get away with. Murder, <laughs> I mean, they know it's not like Texas hasn't gone through this before. They went through this not too long ago in 2011 and they decided to keep the system that they have in place. Why? And I know you know what this, Jank. it's because they're paid to, to do exactly what they're doing with this deregulation, with this privatization. Um, and T. Wa Chang and Jonathan Larson over at TYT Investigates did a really good job at um, actually tying some numbers to this so you guys can get a better sense of just how much the corruption plays a role in the decision making among these uh, lawmakers. And let me also be clear that we're seeing varying degrees of this across the country. Texas is uniquely awful because they were willing to take things much further than other states have been willing to. But other states have also made awful decisions with privatizing um, utilities, something that should be considered um, owned and controlled by the public, right? Democratically controlled by the public. But let me give you some details about um, you know, how this all plays out behind the scenes financially for people like Greg Abbott. So Midland and Energy, for instance, is the largest single donor to Governor Abbott and former Governor Perry, his predecessor, who was tapped by former President Trump to run the Energy Department. Midland's founder has said he is friends with former President George W. Bush, who hails from Midland and reportedly refers to Anwar, that's the founder of Midland, as J Daddy. I mean, Incredibly uncomfortable revelations there, but let me continue. As of 2018, Anwar reportedly had donated more than $1.7 million to Texas Republicans. Abbott got more than a million dollars of that, including both cash and airplane rides. So this Anwar guy and Midland Energy, I mean, he has all of all this interest to ensure that the energy companies are privatized and deregulated. That's how he makes his money. He wants it to be connected to the so-called free market. He wants to make sure that price gouging is something that's protected in that state. And he's gotten what he's wanted because he's paid for it. We have legalized bribery in this country. That's what's happening behind the scenes. That's the reason why people in Texas not only suffer this time around, continue to suffer because something similar happened in 2011. So let me build on that and then I wanna get to a, a, an understandable but bad idea as a solution here. Uh, so uh, f- first of all, in that same tyt.com uh, story, um, they explained that the Texas Railroad Commission is in charge of energy in, in Texas. And it has three members uh, that regulate energy production. Uh, and they have received, in just to take um, a slice of when they made these decisions, between 2010 and 2016, because remember the last big catastrophe uh, during the winter in Texas was in 2011. That's when they consider this stuff. So in 2010 to 2016, when they were making these laws, um, those three folks uh, received 60% of their campaign contributions, which was 6.6% million dollars from fossil fuel companies. Now, who do you think they serve? They, of course they serve the fossil fuel companies. That's who got them elected. That's who gave them $6.6 million. That's where the majority of their money came from. No wonder Bush calls Anwar J daddy. I mean, it's <laughs> it's almost like um, you know one of those uh, convenient relationships where somebody is somebody's daddy and takes care of them. And that's how politics works in this country. The donors are the daddies and the 
Politicians are honestly the prostitutes, in case you need me to draw it out further. And so now when we go to the RCC and the people that are on it, the chair is Christy Craddock and her family makes their money in, you're gonna be shocked to find out, oil. So she's getting paid on both sides. So she, her family makes money from oil, plus she gets her campaign contributions from oil. Then we go to another one of them here. We got Wayne Christian, who's a lifelong conservative businessman. I don't know what his relationship is to energy, but okay, no problem there. How about Jim Wright? Jim Wright has a company that quote, services, that's a good word in this case, services the energy industry. These guys are all corrupt, that's what they are, they're corrupt, they're criminals. And so all those people died, that 11 year old boy who was playing the snow died later in the day. If some of you have seen that, and they all died because the Craddock and Wright and the others and Abbott and Perry and Bush all decided, I'd just rather get paid by energy companies than protect you. So I'm gonna make it optional that they insulate their pipes. I know it costs more money and, and I know they won't do it. And I know when they don't do it and there's a storm, you'll die. But who cares, I already got my bribe. And on top of that, I'll do one last joke on you guys. I'll make it variable. Anna's right, of course, I know Abbott's not stupid. It's supply, Abbott knows the supply and demand. So he, when they pass the law, Abbott and Perry and all those guys laugh and laugh going, this is gonna be great when there's a disaster. We'll pretend to be surprised and that'll create a bigger opportunity to rob the people of Texas of their money. Finally, the bad idea put it forward by good people, by the way, saying now, hey, the people shouldn't pay those bills. The state should pay it for them. Oh, hell no, the state is still taxpayers. No, mm. here I got a revolutionary idea. We don't pay criminals. So no, we're not gonna pay a $200,000 bill that nobody should have gotten in the first place. We're not gonna pay a $17,000 energy bill that nobody should have gotten in the first place. No, energy companies, if you don't like it, move out of Texas. All oh, right, all your customers are in Texas, hmm. tough break. Maybe you shouldn't have killed some of them. Yeah, look, I, when it comes to what, just like the basics that people need to survive, uh, it should not be privatized, should not be deregulated. It should be owned and controlled by the public, period. It should not be tied to supply and demand or the free market or any of that nonsense. There should not be a profit motive behind the bare essentials that people need to survive. And by the way, I want to go to A2 next because this is a former Republican lawmaker who has been making his rounds in the media, you know, kind of to call out the deregulation and privatization in Texas. This is Will Hurd. Um, so let's hear a little bit of what he has to say. Uh, he reinforces a lot of our points, but I, I wanna get your thoughts on it, Cenk, let's watch. Is this a uh, black eye on the Republican Party philosophy of, of low regulation uh, and small government? Um, this was this was a black eye for not planning for this eventuality, and 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 that's and this is this has been going on for years. Uh, the deregulation in in Texas happened almost 20 years ago, and so people have talked about uh, this particular um, situation and that we should have been prepared for it. So uh, again, this is not about you know do we need to go the exact opposite way. I think the conversations instead of using this as a political bludgeon against one another, we should be talking about the serious issues about reliability. No, I take it back. He actually said a lot of things there that I disagree with. Uh, the answer to that question by uh, Chuck Todd was yes, yes. Uh, this should not be, this is not an issue regarding proper planning, okay? This is an issue where all of the wrong, like these companies have all of the wrong incentives. The lawmakers in the state of Texas have all of the wrong incentives. And when the whole point is to take something that people need to survive and turn it into something that operates based on a profit motive. Well, that system is gonna fail and it's gonna fail over and over again. Doesn't matter what kind of planning you engage in ahead of time. The incentives work against doing what's necessary to plan ahead of time when the incentive is profit, period. This should not be a privatized thing. And that's that's really where the problem is here. Yeah. Um, so he's trying.
thing and he's getting a lot of like, I see a lot of people applauding him for being willing to call out Republican lawmakers as a former Republican lawmaker himself. I'm sorry, no cookies for you. Unless you're willing to call it out for what it is, you get no you get no applause, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Anna, you're right. When I read it, it, it seemed positive. He said it was 100% preventable, lack of long term planning. It sounded pretty good. I know that he's a rare guy that is, there are no moderate Republicans, but he was just a normal right wing Republican, not a crazy one. And from time to time, he would even oppose Trump. Um, and of course, that's why he's no longer in Congress. Uh, so if you're gonna do that, you have to run screaming out of the building uh, before the uh, Trump supporters murder you. Um, so, uh, but at the end of the day, no, he didn't say uh, what was correct. By the way, credit to Chuck Todd, that is the correct question. Um, mm-hmm. You guys deregulated, it turned into a goddamn disaster. You wanna just say, hey, you know what? We were wrong, we shouldn't have deregulated, we should have, in made them insulate the pipes instead of saying, well, I mean, if you wanna spend a lot of money to protect the citizens lives, go for it. If not, screw it, kill them and save the money. That was a dumb, dumb idea, wasn't it, Will Hurd? Okay, look, Chuck Todd obviously has to say it in a more polite way and I'm I'm happy that he did. And, and Will Hurd didn't really answer the question. The correct answer is deregulation costs people their lives, sending it a variable rates, guarantees and puts into law price gouging. So we turn justice into injustice. Those are all Republican ideas. And the final one was, let's disconnect from the energy grid, the federal energy grid. So that if we have a disaster, the rest of the country cannot unite around us and help us. Instead, we'll be stranded on our own. And so this idea of rugged individualism also put forward by conservatives and Republicans was also stupid and led to people dying and now being charged an arm and a leg for something they didn't create. The corrupt politicians and the corrupt corporations created. That's the reality. Under no circumstances should anyone pay those energy companies for any of those outrageous bills. You created the mess, it's a cost you created, not us, you bear the cost. The American taxpayers, both Democrats and Republicans, are tired of paying for your mistakes that cost our lives. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.